Hello everybody, it's Umar of Racing. A long time to see, I haven't done videos in some time. It's uh, been personal life, I've been a little bit crazy with childcare and work and everyone. And I've been just kind of just taking it easy, not trying to cram too much stuff into my life. So just trying to pace it out, so I hope you understand. In this video, I just want to show like a small upgrade that I've done to the car. Uh, not too long ago on the forums, there was a guy who was selling, not selling, but he got a Wilwood like six piston brake kit built for him. And he used it, but due to the used car market, he decided to sell uh, his car because he thought he could make some money and free up space in his garage so he offered his kit to me and i decided to get it so let's take a look at it so this kit came packaged really nicely the, the gentleman who packaged it did a great job Every, everything was included he included two sets of pads as well so he included the pads for all even, even the rears for the veloster end as well so he, he included g-lock r12s for the front and r8s in the rear for track and G-Lock GS ones for like everyday driving. And with G-Lock setup, you can use the same pads, not the same pads, but you can use the compounds inter interchangeably on the same rotors, according to them. So that's what I'm doing. So let me show you how it looks like. I've already installed it. I've already driven on the street. I wanted to do an install video, but unfortunately I, again, I had a limited amount of time. I had like three, less than three hours, about three hours to install and then bleed the brakes and everything. So, so I'll show you how it looks like. So here's how it looks like. As you can see, it's used. The previous owner did like a couple of track days. They did, he did um, track night in America. So it looks relatively good. There isn't too much wear. The rotors aren't heat check. Pad layer that you see on the rotors are from the GS1s, the street pads. I'm, I'm in the middle of swapping pads and the next video that i'm going to post will be how to swap pads on these calipers first of all to let me let you know what this caliper is this is the wilwood aero 6 dust sealed six piston caliper the piston volume is about a nine to ten percent less than stock so it will require more kind of pedal pressure to get kind of like the similar clamping port and like or the brake torque which is fine i think that's like more desirable when you if you're driving on the track because with the stock brakes it's easy to get it to abs aggressive pads so that way i can run more aggressive pads in the front and still get away with it and as you can see it's a radial mount uh, i haven't connected the bolt but here you can see there's a bolt to co connect the connected to this bracket and this bracket was custom built by TCE performance and it kind of like matches the offset and everything of the rotor and hat because it's all it's all connected like this whole system because there's a register ring in the middle that you slide the, the hat and the rotor onto and it, this has its own offset so you just need to make sure that uh, matches properly so everything is on point pad uh, like the pad sits perfectly let me zoom in a little bit you know, and from the outside also, the pads are like right on the edge. They look pretty good. I am so far on the street, the pedal feel is amazing. Uh, you like the brakes are right there. You can feel them. The GS ones are the street pads. I'll show you how they look like because I took them off. They're on this side here. So these are the GS ones and uh, they're, they're pretty good. They're not super aggressive for the street and they're good for daily driving. I think they have less friction than the stock pads. This, this side has the GS1, I haven't swapped the pads yet. Uh, again, I, I did one side, the second side, I'm gonna be recording a video of me swapping it. So more onto the, the setup, the kit included brake lines as well. Uh, these are Wilwood brake lines, I think. Yeah, I think they're Wilwood brake lines. And the previous owner put like a s speed bleeder here so I can, just connect the bleed bottle here and just press the pedals myself and it'll make the bleeding much e much easier. Yeah, and then on the other side, he also included titanium uh, kind of plates for behind the pads. For the track, I'm going to be using these. Also, yeah, the rotors are 355 mil diameter and then um, they're 32 mil thickness. So the, compared to the performance pack, the last around, the, the rotors are, so here I have a rotor, these are 300 and 45 and they're 30 mil th thickness so i'm gaining about two mil two millimeter thickness and about like 10 millimeter more extra diameter uh, granted the actual kind of i think the they call the radial thickness i think i'm not sure uh, i forgot the name but the kind of thickness of the actual surface of the rotor is smaller than stock at, at the thickest point the stock pads are taller or like thicker than these but, but these pads they are 
like when we get a little bit closer. So these pads, like they, the way they, they, they're more circular, so they kind of hug the rotor surface better than the stock pads. Because stock pads are on a sliding floating ca caliper. So it's a little bit different. So overall, the pad volume is bigger than the stock and the piston volume is slightly smaller, but there's also more rotor surface. I haven't taken it out on track yet. So it's going to be a, a, a test soon. I'm going to be testing it out. So far, don't have any issues on the street. I've done some hard braking, but not too hard. I'm going to be, once I finish this job, I'm going to be throwing 200 treadwear tires and the race pads and then bed them in and then this Saturday have a track day. If I were to spec out this kit, I would have probably gotten it differently. Like the rotors, I mean the calipers, I would have gotten them anodized gray. And also I would have gotten the pistons uh, without the dust seal. So the body with the dust seal is slightly different than the non-dust seal version. So that yeah, you can't just put this pistons from the other one into here. Although the Stainless steel pistons are the same, but there's room for that dust seal. I'm trying to, I'm doing research right now to see like, can I remove the dust seals and still get away with it? Am I gonna be in trouble? Cause I'm gonna be cooking those dust seals off on the track. They'll probably catch on fire. So I don't wanna have issues of like, you know, brake fluid leaking or anything. So if you're getting a similar kit, don't get the dust seal if you're going to be tracking. But if you're going to be like just daily driving and you're just a car show person, you just goes to car show and parks on the parking lots, just get the dust seal one because you're gonna be driving every day probably. Yeah, and then I would have also gotten the floating rotors and with the floating rotors, you know, the rotor, the disc will be expanding uh, independently from the hat. That way there's no stress on these connecting points. It will also be moving laterally as well uh, to help with the pad knockback. So th that's uh, this is the setup currently. I'll be, like I said, I'll be taking the track cross this weekend and to see how it is. I already swapped the rear pads to the G-Lock R8s a couple of nights ago. They're looking good. Again, these pads are used. I got these pads, I mean, I got this whole setup used, so the previous owner did some track days on them, but they don't look like too worn out. My rotors, the stock rotors, after like one HPD day, or there's already like heat check cracks and I'm hard on the brakes, so maybe these will heat check when I'm at VIR during an HPD, but yeah. Other than that, I'm like super happy to have this kit. It's a big upgrade. Uh, as far as wheel clearance, my Koenig ampl Ampliforms clear fine, there's no problem. My daily wheels didn't initially clear, the wheel weights were touching the calipers, so I got them rebalanced and after that they're fine. I've been driving them on the street, there's no, no issues, no problems with that. I'm very happy that both of my wheels clear so that I can use the GS1 pads and also the daily wheel so that I don't put too many miles on my 200 trailer tire. I'm still using Motul RBF 600. I'm also going to be putting uh, caliper temperature stickers on the calipers to see how hot they get, whether it's like, you know, it's if I need to add any brake cooling or anything, uh, just to get an idea of the temperatures. I will be posting more videos. I'm going to be doing some research, see if there's any like local shops that do, that rebuild uh, will with calipers. I can maybe take my take the, take the calipers to them and then have them retrofit or just like at least remove the those uh, wiper seals that um, kind of seal against dust. They make those seals for countries that require brakes to be completely sealed off um, against dust and everything. So because there's some like dusty areas like Australia, Middle East, those countries I think they require. So which makes sense. Previous owner, I mean, again, I didn't inspect this kit. Previous owner got this. Uh, I think he lives in Georgia, so he like uh, just wanted to make sure that he can drive those year in, year in and out. So yeah, that's that's like that's pretty much the only concern I have. And the other concern is the rotors, since they're fixed static two piece. I might just you know prematurely kind of crack them, but we'll see if they last longer than stocks and. If the, let's say, cause the stock ones are, they, they would have lasted me probably like half a season. If I do a lot of events, they will last me about, it was like aggressive pads, about like three HPD events or four HPD events before they have like uh, pretty big cracks. If I can go through the whole season with these, I think it's a win. Um, that way I can just kind of use this kit as is and then upgrade later in the line. Um, you know, I can upgrade the rotor or either just the rings maybe, uh, or upgrade to, to a truly floating setup. Um, the thing is, like, if I go to a truly full floating setup, I need to get new brackets made. 
uh, from TCE performance because the offset will be different and and then there's the issue with the, the calipers of the seals as well so like I might end up getting new calipers new rotors and new hats um, but I really don't want to do that because I spent already spent a lot of money so we'll see we'll see I'm just gonna use this as is it's gonna be positive hope for the best hopefully those titanium plates limit the number of the amount of heat that goes through the pads are still relatively thick they're still decent life in them so they wouldn't be transferring too much heat back to the pistons that's all i have just wanted to kind of post about this uh, i already posted on social media so if you follow me on facebook and um, instagram i already shared uh, lots of photos and everything if you have any questions about this kit let me know my my buddy and i we did a ton of research on this and the original owner of this he's just he just pretty much did most of the work of just like he i think sent a knuckle or like the spindle to tce so that he can map it and kind of scan it and create a kit that perfectly fits there's like i didn't have to use any shims because usually with willwood kids they include a bunch of shims to like um, I mean this one had shims as well just for fitment but without the shims it just worked fine it was just a uh, perfect fitment if you have any questions if you're interested in this kit let me know uh, I'm, not, I'm not a dealer but I'll just like point you in the right direction I think it's a good value for the money as far as the caliper the caliper is like doesn't have a bridge bolt or anything to remove the pads from the top so you have to remove the caliper in the next video i will show you how to change pads it's not too bad if you have one of those like sliding calipers it takes about the same because the, the sliding calipers you have to like slide the pads you have to press on those pins and get the pads off and slide them in maybe that one is a little bit faster but this one's like not too bad as long as you get all the steps right uh, you can get it done pretty quickly so anyways again like you like i said if you have any questions let me know thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please like the video it helps out i think with the I'm sure you've seen them. all the YouTubers that you watch, like likes really help the video get out there. So just, even if you didn't like the video, just, just throw a like in the video, it just helps out. So, all right, thank you for watching.